Every day, Chicagoans use nearly one billion gallons of water, enough to fill the Sears Tower two and a half times. With a simple twist of a handle, water appears from the spout and disappears down the drain. Water seems ordinary, instant, endless, but is it? Before it reaches the faucet, Chicago's water goes through rigorous treatment and a vast underground system. Its journey after the flush is just as complex. What does it take to make sure our water doesn't run dry? A great lake, a river, and gritty ingenuity. The source of Chicago's water, Lake Michigan, is easy to see. Its 1,180 cubic miles of water represents nearly 4% of the world's unfrozen surface freshwater. Here, where city meets shoreline, sits the world's largest conventional water purification plant. Opened in 1964 and operated by the city of Chicago, the James W. Jardine plant can treat one million gallons of water each minute. The treatment process begins about two and a half miles offshore at large structures called cribs. These are like the straws of the city's water supply. About 20 feet below the lake's surface, water enters into a shaft and descends 168 feet to a tunnel system deep in the bedrock. Built between the 1890s and the 1930s, the tunnels are an engineering marvel. Workers blasted through the earth with dynamite and carted clay and bricks using Model Ts. The water's trip through the tunnels, from crib to shore, takes about an hour. Inside the plant, rotating screens catch fish and debris. Giant pumps then lift the water 25 feet. From here on out, gravity powers much of the process, one that involves clever chemistry, massive mixing bowls, and sand. Here's how it works. As water flows through basins, three different chemicals are mixed in. First, chlorine, which kills harmful bacteria and other microorganisms. Second, fluoride, which helps prevent cavities. And finally, aluminum sulfate, or alum, that makes the surface of microscopic solids sticky. The sticky buildup is called flock. Giant riverboat-style paddles, called flocculators, slowly mix the alum and water. The flock sinks, and the cleaner water moves on to the next step, filtration. Each of the 96 swimming pool-sized filters at Jardine has two layers. On top, fine sand, and below, coarse gravel. As the water sinks through the layers, particles get stuck in the spaces between the grains. Eight hours after entering the plant, the water is ready to drink. Twelve pumping stations transport the water from the reservoir through 4,000 miles of pipe to nearly five and a half million people. Lake Michigan has always supplied Chicago's faucets, but for a long time, it also received what was flushed. Originally, the Chicago River flowed east into the lake. By the late 1800s, the river had become the boomtown's waste canal, channeling sewage, runoff, and disease-causing bacteria into the drinking supply. So, in 1890, the newly formed sanitary district started digging. New, deep canals pulled the flow of the Chicago River west, linking it to the Des Plaines River, the Illinois, the Mississippi, and beyond. A vast underground maze of tunnels also took root. Today, all the water that goes down the drain, from bathroom sinks to city streets, enters more than 100 miles of tunnels, ranging from 8 to 30 feet in diameter. Nearly 1.3 billion gallons of wastewater are funneled each day to seven treatment plants operated by the Metropolitan Water Reclamation District. Most ends up eight miles southwest of downtown Chicago at the Stickney facility, the largest in the world. The four-step water treatment process mimics a natural river. It's about water, gravity, oxygen, and bacteria. This is how it works. After passing through rotating screens that catch large debris, giant pumps lift the water 50 feet. From here on out, gravity powers much of the process. As water flows through the first tanks, heavy inorganic particles, such as sandy grit, sink. Oxygen is injected into the tanks, and the churning, bubbly water breaks down organic matter, such as sewage. Next, water moves slowly through long settling tanks. Organic material sinks to the bottom. Oils float to the top. Water moves out. Oxygen is again pumped into the water, 
but this time with oxygen-breathing microbes that will digest most remaining waste. In the final step, water circulates through 30-foot diameter pools. Small particles settle, and the treated water, called effluent, spills over into transfer channels. Some eight hours after entering the plant, the effluent is released into the sanitary and ship canal. This is the first leg of its journey all the way to the Gulf of Mexico. So what about those solids that settled? Some go to landfills, but others, rich in organic matter, called biosolids, can be recycled as fertilizer and landscaping fill. One million pounds of biosolids are made every day. Despite the astounding scale and sophistication of Chicago's water treatment facilities, both before the faucet and after the flush, they do have limits. Lake Michigan isn't bottomless, and efforts to avoid turning use into misuse are everywhere and at every scale. Keeping harmful materials out of drains can also protect precious water resources, because in the world of water, we're all downstream. Thank you.